So with the coronavirus pandemic still in its early stages, countries of the world are running a high-stakes experiment that may show how single-payer state-run healthcare systems fare under strain. According to the most recent forecasts, peak infections are weeks away in most countries, including South Africa and the United States. Vaccines and targeted antiviral medicines are not yet available. But how will healthcare systems cope if caseloads surge and hospitals become overwhelmed. These are just some of the issues that we're going to talk about. We're joined in the studio now by Professor Lenore Manson, who is a medical anthropologist and public health expert. A very good uh, evening to you. And I believe you're also, uh, more importantly, a social scientist. Um, So we've seen that the WHO just had a briefing emphasizing testing, 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 lamenting the fact, the Director General, that, uh, you know, countries just somehow not taking this or doing this seriously enough. I want to talk about South Africa, especially in terms of our spatial differences. When we emphasize testing, 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 but we say it'll cost about 1.4 for you to get testing, what does that really mean in terms of our defense? It means an awful lot of people aren't going to be able to afford to be tested. Um, We know that the health system and the public health system is already under enormous pressure and people go for colds and and ordinary seasonal flu five o'clock in the morning hoping to see someone by midday the coronavirus has now gained momentum and with momentum fear and panic and that means that more people are going to be going to the health center if they can afford to get there and the health centers are going to be under phenomenal pressure Mm. And I mean, just looking at our health system per se, as we talk about just what are the challenges, I mean, I know for certain that there are communities that are very far from health facilities, whether it be clinics or actually hospitals that can facilitate the kind of testing that is required. Yeah. Um, and and part of the, the challenge is that remote areas are not going to even have had training um, and have a sufficient supplies. America doesn't have enough testing, so there are real issues there. Um, But I think that a major factor is that if you have to walk four hours to a health centre and you are already sick, then you're going to leave it. And at the point at which breathing problems become a major symptom and it is coronavirus and that person is in serious trouble. Mm. And and, I mean, as you mentioned, the United States, we saw a health expert in Congress there talking about how their testing is failing. What exactly does that mean and how can we learn lessons from that here in South Africa? Well, I mean, to some extent we're leading. I mean, I don't think that South Africa is necess- necessarily needs to follow the United States and much of the United States um, is in real trouble so that the, the diagnosis is presumptive. It's on the basis of symptoms alone mm. that they're counting those symptoms as coronavirus and taking greater measures. At the point at which someone has laboured breathing and needs hospitalised care, it almost doesn't matter if it's coronavirus or not because because that's at the level of a patient and you need the patient in intensive care with oxygen to help them breathe, to help them survive. And not everybody will, and we've seen that happen in the United States. So whilst the US has been claiming that it's been at the forefront, um, there's also a lot of things that have to be put in place before you declare an emergency. And I think that Cyril Ramaphosa um, came in relatively early, given that we had very few cases and but it is now escalating Mm. but there are major challenges including as you've just shown on the news in terms of access to water in terms of affordability of soap or sanitizer so that a a request that people use soap and wash their hands often is laughable if you can't afford soap in the first place sanitizer i mean it well indeed indeed so you know that you've got companies that um, are able to provide for those of us who can afford to go to private care but we've always had a challenge in meeting the health needs of a poorer population and it is the poorer population where they, where 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 I think, in fact, the the quarantining now, the self isolation becomes really important because, from my own perspective, if coronavirus were to take hold in congested informal settlements, 
then we have a huge problem mm. and we and it and and that's going to be magnified by the by the downstream effects including the economic effects on households mm. and i want to talk about something and, and this is something that we've seen within the public health care system in the past that of uh, poor uh, public hospital infection control i mean we've seen year in year out we've seen newborn babies dying because of Klebsiella and, and, and there has been a concern raised that it's because we are unable to. How are we going to contend with this then? It's going to need a huge injection of money to be able to do it. You know, we have, we have the best, some of the best private hospitals in this country where infection control has been closely managed, not with the coronavirus, but since the beginning of antibiotic resistance or since that became a major issue. So there's always issues around um, decontamination and hand washing and so on. The public hospital system is in real trouble and some hospitals are much worse than others and it really does require um, a, a shift of funding in order to strengthen those hospitals and to make sure they have supplies you know it's not the, mm. that that and, and it's interesting and especially yeah. that you mentioned the fact that uh, you need certain resources to uh, care for patients who are already infected. The UK is at the moment struggling with ventilators, begging for the army and the aviation industry to build them ventilators. Is that something that we, we say that we are capacitated with at least? I would be surprised and I haven't got the figures and I couldn't find mm. them earlier this afternoon to be able to answer that. But we will have ve ventilators at the major tertiary hospitals, but as soon as you go beyond Cape Town, um, Tigerberg, Stellenbosch, the hospitals in Johannesburg and Pretoria, we're going to go down mm. to fewer um, facilities, um, fewer resources, um, poor care, lack of um, capacity of staff to manage infection and that coupled with escalating panic and so we're going I mean you know there are multiple things that happen in an epidemic including not only community burnout but health worker burnout mm. and so that's also an issue. Even I mean, the availability of beds in ICU and of course absolutely. if people don't have the money just to afford the public health care system alone then they Well if they don't have the money to buy a bar of soap which many of yeah. our people do not have and and also I mean just as relating to the community you know the advice around self-isolation does not work if five of you live in a one-room shack yeah, absolutely thank you so much professor Lenore Manderson medical anthropologist and public health care specialist including a social scientist Aldrin it's